I will begin with the script for remotely conducted yes. meetings. This is a Zoom meeting, hybrid, allowing the public to participate. All questions should be directed through the chair. This is the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board. I'm the chairman, Andrew Lowell. Tonight, our members are Jim Sherwin. Please say here. Here. Scott Anderson. Here. Dave Fossey. Here. Dave Fransudo. Here. Ginger Andrews. Here. Peter Brace. Here. For staff, we have Tara Riley. Here. Any anticipated speakers? If so, state your name. Good evening. This is an open meeting of the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023. For this meeting, the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded. Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. <clears throat> Please hold uh, until your name is called to speak on any agenda item. Remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, wait for the chair to yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in conversation with other members, please do so through the chair. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those of members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their name and be acknowledged and speak through the chair. Any vote taken tonight will be taken by a roll call vote. This is the Harbor Shellfish Advisory Board, Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. Calling this meeting to order. Can we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Second. This is Very Ginger. Welcome. Motions made by Mr. Anderson, seconded by Ms. Andrews. All in favor, Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Sherwin? Aye. Ms. Andrews? Aye. Mr. Bossy? Aye. Mr. Franzuto? Aye. Mr. Brace? Aye. The chair votes aye as well. Uh, did we have draft minutes? Yes. Yes. And are there any uh, revisions, comments on the minutes for March 5th? 2024. If not, somebody yeah. make a motion to approve them. Second. Motion to approve. Second. Motion's uh, made Mr. Anderson, seconded by Mr. Bossy to approve the minutes of March 5th. All in favor, Mr. Sherwin. Aye. Mr. Anderson. Aye. Mr. Bossy. Aye. Mr. Fransudo. Aye. Mr. Brace. Aye. Ms. Andrews. Aye. They have votes aye as well. Uh, tonight uh, is a workshop meeting, and uh, we will begin with shellfish regulations. Has everybody had a chance to look them over? I would be honest, I have not. I have copies. So I'm hoping... Uh, you have copies? copies? Yes. So, I tried to view my phone, but I couldn't really get a good one. could squint a lot. Yeah, I know. I'll be I just didn't bring it with me. Thanks. So, Tara, for the yellow, the yellow, the changes or the. Um, yeah, can I make a suggestion? Um, so, there, there are a lot of things going on in here. Um, some of it is just. Uh, grammatical and clarifying the language a bit. Um, like the Board of Selectmen is now called the Select Board, so you'll see those changes. But the areas that we highlighted are items that probably warrant a little more discussion. And, you know, we need to look at the wording and decide um, if it's appropriate or if it needs to be clarified further. 
So the first one is on page 141 um, and it's closures and red flag, which is something that we've been talking about for the past three or four meetings. Um, and so the regulation as it stands, you know, kind of calls out where the red flag is. Um, and as we know, this year it kind of changed location due to a variety of reasons. So, you know, um, perhaps it could say something like red flag raised and advertised at, you know, I don't know, uh, various sites. Or as something. long as there's good communication with the small yeah. and do we have a sense of whether um, Great Arbiaco will continue to be the, the site, well, or, they, or they were just sort of filling in? Well, um, I, I was thinking about this, and I, I was wondering, would it make sense um, to put a, a flagpole up at the at the shelter center? Yeah, I've offered to do that. I, th I think if, if you put it on the end of the dock, and, and you could get a <clears throat> um, from Otis, I know for a fact you could get a, a Rhodes 19 sailboat mast with a, with a, with the guys, and, and you know guy it to the piling, so it's not going to blow down every 20 minutes. It could be seen from a farmer, and it would be a, you know a location that's not going to change, like the Marine Department's flagpole is down, and I don't. I don't know why it's neither here nor there, but I was just wondering if that would be a possibility. Would that mean, I know this is kind of nitpicky, but would that mean the person who came down to fly the flag would have to park down at the triangle and then walk down, or would they be able to drive down and park at the end of the street and do it without getting into trouble? Well, at, at, at you know, I was down there the other day. I took uh, Stuart Smith from Chatham and, and uh, the harbor master from uh, Dennis down there, like, 2.30 in the afternoon, I drove right down. But but to your point, at 6 o'clock, right. it's not going to matter. You know, and at 4.30 or, or or whatever, you know, but I think at 6 o'clock in the morning, it wouldn't be an issue. Or JC could just tell you guys, can you take it down for me? Yeah, or these guys when they're, get, you know, when they're leaving for the day, you know, or whatever. But, I mean, if you, if you, if you built a, if you built a sleeve, it mounted to the piling to hold the base and then guide it with the two guys off the two pilings that are there. I think central location is not going to move. You're not beholden to Great Arbor Yacht Club or anybody else. <clears throat> well, I would consider Washington Street to be more central. How's the visibility? Whereas, you know, most people are on their way to get to their boats are going to travel Washington Street. Oh, I mean, and, if, and if you I'm stop at the town pier, you can look right over there. Or if you're in the boat basin, you, you're right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's to me, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Is whatever you guys think. Is the boat basin fight for <laughs> The boat basin fight for Mr. Chairman? Ginger, please. Uh, I kind of think it's a good idea. Um, it, it is visible from, you know, the... Um, uh the the town pier there and uh i think and um i i think it's a good idea to have the location identified in the regulations so that there's no moving it around there's uh you know there's just an agreement about where it's going to be and um so i i'm in favor i mean for a million years it was at 34 washington street but you know for some reason that doesn't seem to be working out um, to Jim's point, um, again, you're beholden to them. And it, to be perfectly honest, it's quite a hike to walk down that, yes, to say, walk down that. to the, you know, the dock master's office here. He could, you know, keep the flag in his truck. You know, he drives by the NOAA, NOAA weather station. He checks the tent. He goes right to the boathouse and he, and he puts it up. Did they used to have a flight pull at the Marine Department? What's that? Did they used to have this not? Exist? We had a we had it there for as long as I can remember. I mean, you know, forty some years, but, uh, but they, it, their flag pulls down, and uh, I guess they were flying it at Codalax, but that became an issue, and 
and they went to Great Harbor. Again, I think if it's on town property, you don't have to then you have to worry, you don't have to worry about it. Um, oh, it's not going anywhere. We we have a 99 year lease on. Was there not? not I believe there was an issue with the flag going up after some guys were already out. Flag didn't go up till six thirty-five. And oh, that's some a, guys were already out. I'm just thinking. That's a shout now for travel you. to Brant Point. If if the person raising the flag is running late, you're adding another ten minutes to getting that flag up by going to Brant Point. But, oh. uh, that's a that's Can we a get to the bottom of the Washington Street. Why we don't have a flag pole? Need a there? Light pole. Huh? Need I know. A light pole there. The flag. Well, there there isn't one at Brand Point either. But I mean, Jim, you're you know you're actively out there. You know. I mean, that's where it was forever. What's what's your thoughts? I mean, if you're in your boat, it's easy to see it from the boat basin. But if you're driving down the street, it's easier to see it from Washington Street. Yeah, I mean, that's where it's always been. You, you can yeah. you can also see if, if you're Point driving, you can you can see it. If it was at the boathouse, you could see it from East Street, Easy Street. I mean, anyway. yeah. But the, um, what was I going to say? I don't know. It, it just, I don't know. It seems the boathouse would be a, a good alternative. And as far as it not being put at, <clears throat> um, and, and I know we talked about this the other day when we were talking about the temperature and everything. There numerous times I remember. That the temperature would would drop, and the guys would be out there fishing, and I would jump in the boat and I'd run out there and I, you know, don't you, you keep what you got. Let's go. It's 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 too cold. It's gotten too cold. Well, unless the warden's job, right? That, that's a, what's that? That's a job for the warden. That the, right. Yeah. But right now the warden doesn't have a boat in the water, and neither is the harbor master, which I find interesting. But mm. um, it's automatic. <laughs> well, at least it was pulled. I mean, we've been we've been calling our phones before in the past too. I was gonna say I thought, oh, it, I thought I mean, big, pulled, with the yeah. fleet with yeah, the fleet is. being 20, 25, right. like as small as it is now. Yeah, far, somebody gets far, a phone call and everybody else. Right. You know, but as far as the thing going up late, that's a that's a personnel issue. That's a that's a, you, you, you know, you tell you you tell your warden you go to work at, at six o'clock and the you know damn thing's gotta be up. Well, it's not. Actually, is it is that included in here? The time that it should be up by? Or? No, I'm not it seeing. Because it'll be displayed. Mm -hmm. I think the time's in here, but it's further in. I don't think it is in is here. It? So if it isn't, you know, maybe that is a good idea to have like a time that it's going to be up, so it's not six o'clock. It's, 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 it's not the reason we that we discussed it having a common temperature point, the NOAA buoy. That anybody can check mm -hmm. anytime they want. It doesn't matter whether the flag's up or not at six o'clock in the morning. If, you, if you're looking at your at the buoy and it's gone, it's 26 degrees. You well, know the flag should be up. So why are you going out? The time is 10 o'clock. So it could happen at 10 o'clock, right? But, but if, it, if the temperature is below 28 degrees at 10 o'clock, then the flag is flown. Mm -hmm. So that's when the flag goes up. But the point that Bruce Beebe was making was it's a six minute delay. Mm -hmm. So if so, he, so then J, I remember JC said, um, if you guys are okay with 10.06, then then that's when the flag will go up. Yeah. So. And I didn't think anybody had any no. grief about right. the six minutes, right? right? No. So maybe we should just say, I mean, maybe we should say approximately 10 o'clock and that'll cover 10.06, right? And we should say um, that we want to have it at the, um, at the hatchery, a red flag will be raised at the town uh, shellfish hatchery located at Zero Eastern Street and at Jackson's Landing in Mattica. Does he still put the flag up at Jackson's hey, Point in Mattica? Okay, okay, he's going to be in two places at once. Yeah, on, on page 149, sorry, Andy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Scott. Okay. On 149, it does talk about not using dredges before 6.30 a.m. or after 4.30 p.m. Oh, for oh, yeah. timing. I thought you were talking about yeah. timing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that doesn't... So that, to yeah. me, yeah. one and the same. If you're, yeah. you're using right. your dredge... Well, you can, if there's no flag, you can use your dredge. But common sense is going to tell you if it's 26 degrees, you're going to have a flag. Right. Why, why get your boat? Right. Right. I mean, we're wasting, we're doing a lot of discussion on right. something that... Yeah. We've got a, a lot of a little common sense. It's a small fleet. We've got telephone chains. 
Um, and God, and do we leave you with enough to work with on this one? Yeah, did you have I a comment? Jill's, I have a oh, comment yeah. on it. Says, uh, dredge may not be used before 6 30 a.m. or after 4 30 p.m. Shouldn't that say no taking of shellfish? Oh, are you because on the, you're, the future? Technically, if you're diving, you're yeah, you're be fishing. You're jumping time. ahead. Oh, sorry. We're gonna have to wait. Sorry. Yeah. The reason that was, I put you there. The, the yeah. reason that was changed, it, it used to be. I can't remember what it used to be, but we changed it to four thirty because that gave everybody uh, about a fifteen or twenty minute window to get to the dock before it got dark. Because we we were we were waiting on guys in the dark and and that didn't sit right with me so we changed it to 4 30 so that gave them about a 15 or 20 minute window to run down harbor and we get them to the dock if they weren't at the dock we'd go looking for them and we would keep again the fleet's a lot smaller but we would keep track of them during the day so we knew where the general location as to where they were last fishing uh, but that's why it got changed to 4 30. it was a safety issue more than anything all right, should we move you on to enough. the next one? You got enough to work with? I do. I, I, I will go ahead and like edit these and bring them back to you to make sure we'll do a final read through on everything. Um, so temper, temperature restrictions are the next one. Um, and the only comment I had on this one was to clarify the technology used in location it's out where, where it's housed. So a lot related to, you know, the NOAA buoy, NOAA buoy. and just defining that. Um, well, it's the it's the it's the it's the NOAA weather station located at the steamship. It's in that little funky trapezoid looking metal building. That's but it, it's only accessible online. There's no right. thermometer. No, 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 there's no there's no thing. But access it online. That's where the that's where the, the tide gauges and that's where the temperature and wind thing is that comes off that. Website. So those are the instruments that feed the information. Yes, the sir. Yes, sir. If you look on top of that building, there's a little um, array looking thing that shoots it. It shoots it to the satellite. Right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, all right. So moving on. The next. The next highlighted is on page 143, and it's catch reports provided to the town. Um, all catch reports for the previous year must be on file prior, prior to any commercial license renewal. So that was added. So that means? So that means everyone needs to file their catch reports for this year before they renew their license, which happens March 31st of this year. For the the following year. It's the catch report, an actual sheet that they fill out daily. It's, it's something that is filled out and sent to the DMF, but we also required a copy of it um, so that we can track our landings because the DMF tracks them by year. So they take spring of like 2023 with um, fall of 2023. We we do like fall of 2023, spring of 2024. So the numbers are different. Well, okay, well so my you're... question was, is it a national sheet of paper that each it scholar is. fills out to have a... They do it monthly. Monthly. So they're right. responsible for tracking each day what they get. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, um, I don't know if we could do this, but... Since there's so few of them, if the natural resources department can hand out, can hand out a log book with the information, where, with the headings of the things that you put in there, instead, instead of relying on, on them to write it down on a napkin or whatever, I'm like, here, here you go, here's here's your log book. But it's a form. It's a it's a it's a form that they that they have to send to the state, so they just make a copy of it and send it to us. Okay. We like it monthly so we can track the bushel count. We don't get it monthly though. So okay. a lot of people what I'm saying is that that means that you you no offense, Jim, but I mean it's it's you're leaving it up to the scalper to to write things down on different pieces of paper or whatever and then total that and have you had like good success with people doing that? Or do you think that they're you know, doing um 
I'll comment on this. Okay, okay. go ahead. So you have to no, fill, sorry, you have to fill out a state report anyway. So what Tar is saying is that you get the same report as you do for the state. And you have to submit that monthly. You get a hate mail, basically, which makes sense to use the same report. It makes the same thing. Like most state and federal stuff now, you report to the feds and the state using the same report. Whether if you have a federal and state permit, it all goes to the feds, and then the state gets the same one. Mm -hmm. So, so that'd be you, similar to this. So state if you're requiring to copy that and submit it to yeah, get a CC resources. Yeah. When you send it in by okay. email or right. you send it in my mail. Oh, okay. Mail. But you could write down whatever you wanted to if you didn't remember what it was. That's and what I'm saying is that the, uh, you get the sense that scallopers are, are every day writing down what they got. You could, but when you sell your catch, then it goes to the state too because the dealer, okay. the dealer report. Are they paying it against yeah. the dealer? <laughs> okay. Yeah, they can check it if right. they didn't do it. I mean, Jared, can I ask you what you have crossed out here is, is you want to get rid of that. You want to replace all catch reports from previous year must be filed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to make it simple and, and mm -hmm. just one. And should well, I will I will say that a lot of these edits were made by JC, so okay. they weren't really. And I'll tell you the ones that I disagree on, but this okay. one I feel like is fine. Okay. And should the report go to the shellfish warden, or should the report go to? The, I natural mean, resources department. I feel like they all go to the natural resources department because we're the ones that put it into the computer database. Well, then I think we ought to change that. The catch report should be submitted. Okay. And should you take the word monthly out of there then? Well, they will get submitted monthly because of the copy. They're just CCs of the state. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. I see. They have to all be in before they get their license. Right. That's license. really what this right, is saying. Right. Right. That's the big change. Okay. So report to the natural resource. And ideally, you know, somebody's out there checking to know like what's coming in daily anyways that we can compare to the catch reports that come in. Um, okay, the next one is well, I just okay. I'm sorry, but um all catch reports for the previous year must be on file prior to any commercial license renewal. Licenses have to be renewed March 31st. Uh, is, the, is the year January to December, or is it the season? It's the season. So sorry, you should say previous season. Okay. Thank so how, how do you get your report in on the same day you have to have your license? I mean, you know, it doesn't seem like you give them any time. I mean, you, you should be filming there. as you go, right? <laughs> I you agree with that, days, but I know yeah. there's been trouble along the way and and uh, um, and lagging. And I imagine maybe you're trying to eliminate that lagging. How many guys get their licenses? Before the last, before the last well, day, the last day of the season, yeah. And so if they, if they let's say, do they a lot, a lot. So let's say they that, get them. So let's say they get them at the end of February, March twentieth. So that means that they're turning in catch reports that don't include March. So then is March included in the next year's data? No, it should be submitted. But I think a lot of people that I mean, the few people that are fishing through the end of March are probably the only ones. That are waiting to buy till the last minute okay. for people that forget. I think you're probably close enough at that point. It's not going to really matter. Mm -hmm. But I know, I know what you mean. Are we good on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Recreational catch reports. Um, the only thing I had on here is that there's no mechanism for reporting any recreational catch. And so I don't know that, you know, we can call it anything specific in here because we don't have anything specific yet. Um, but my ideal situation would be the same thing. When you go to get your shellfish button for the following year that you would write down as best as you can remember what your catch was from the past but season. Then we have all of us old folks mm -hmm. where we don't show get a button every year. But I think, That's remember, true. we had a discussion at the Harbor, yeah. Harbor Plan about sure it's it's how, how education is important at the point of yeah. issue, issuance. And if, um, if, and so we should be handing something out that says you need to keep, keep track of the bushels that you get because you won't be able to get your license the next year unless you produce. Well, and, and also when you... Uh, from a practical point of view, when 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 the person walks up to the window and says, oh, I have a shellfish license, say, well, where's your catch report from last year? They hand them a blank form 
they do the best they can yeah and they, they fill it out and then you give them a blank form for the current year that you're in and say next time bring this back with you yeah but, but to, to Dave Bossy's point, yeah, I mean, if I go dig a couple of bushels of coal, I, how do I report that? And, and I'm well, probably not going to tell you where I got them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not <laughs> No, I, I, I think this should be able to be all paperless. And I mean, the minute I come in with my bushel on a Sunday in October, I ought to be able to plug in and, hey, I got a bushel here today. It can be paperless. Uh, that way it's right on the money instead of waiting another whole you know until you go to get your license again next september i mean it's really hard though if you know you're required to be there in person to apply for a permit to show your license and that sort of thing to make it all online you know so i think you're going to have to do both and to your point we did talk about doing a mailer to the people with the white buttons to mm -hmm. mail in to catch that because it is a substantial amount well, now I'm sure it is. It's probably commercial. a bigger group. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking of a catch report on no, yeah. the license. I think you have to offer both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would agree. I don't think we want to deter anybody from recreational shell fishing or anything else, like yeah. making it complicated. There's going to be a, a link it. on the natural resources page and yeah. it just says, I guess Can, I got 25 catch years report reports this in yeah, better. Yeah. You put your number in and you recreational put your, catch report. Put I your, mean, for the oyster yeah. farmers, they hand out a logbook every year that's a Vibrio logbook and they have to track their harvest and sign off times and stuff like that. So, oh. you know, people still use paper to report things. Um, no, so but it, it could be done. Yeah. Unless the unless the permit issuers at the police station are hopefully eventually at another location, have a file. They can call it through name and say, oh, I see how you filled it out online, and that's great. But the problem is if you're doing it online, you do have to have, somebody has to write the software to do that. I mean, that's right. got to be implemented. Right, it's exactly. Not, so not that, it makes the point that it should be hard copy as well, because yeah. then they can say, you have your catch report, because I don't see it here online. Oh, my God. I see it. Okay. All right, we good on that? Yeah. Did you get enough from us on yeah, this? Yeah, we got to figure out. So yeah. online and paper? Yep. Is that it'll be a recommendation. I don't know if it will. Yeah. Right, that's a new thing this year, right? Got to be it's developed. Done before, right? Yes. Can you get can you get a license even if you don't speak or read English? Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's a problem. And so we now have to figure out how to deal with multilingual. No, it's true. Absolutely. We were, we were printing them. You probably still are printing signs and... Yeah, we do um, Portuguese. Portuguese and Spanish okay. and Bulgarian, I think. It's, prim it's primarily for closures. Well, but yeah. it's, it's a good point. Um, the next item is, the, I, I believe this was added. It is um, the recreational dredge license for retired scallopers. I don't think that was specific, had any like, specific definitions. So I believe this was added. Um, Someone who it, it, it was set up so page 145. Somebody the white button. This is all new. Oh I don't know. I mean and on my copy it's blue so I assume that it's, it's not. It's on page 143, right? Eight. Yes. And the 145. Is this JC? Yeah. It was it was done so a guy who'd been buying his commercial license forever, right. who still had a scallop boat sitting in the driveway, who wanted to go and get a mess for his family for Christmas, could use a dredge. We did that. We did that when we yep. when we reviewed and did the shellfish race the yep. last time. And it made yeah. well, I think it made people like George Zendis and Frank Marks and you know Herbie Stoker. I mean, there's a bunch of those guys. Kenny dudes, you know, old guys who would, you know, they had paid plenty for plenty of licenses just the way. The whole thing them. looks fine, right? You guys, it's yeah, I have, I have down that Jeff added this okay. in 2019, so it hasn't been. We did adopted. talk about it a lot. I would, I would say, to clarify, it may be recreational scallop dredge. You know, maybe someone who, just to clarify, someone who would. Previously held commercial retired license. commercial scholar, yeah, or commercial. Okay. Yeah, what, retired commercial license holders, and, yeah. and it was limited to it was if I remember right, Terry, isn't it limited to three bushel? 
Two. 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 The wrong page because I where do you see that? 145. One, one I need to go down further. Then. It's uh, letter C 260 dash oh, Okay, okay. Now, so my, two, okay. all right. Uh, my issue with this would be, and of course, I'm, I'm sure there's an explanation, but uh, not being allowed to open them in a commercial shanty. Uh, now I can see the reason why if this gets mixed in with somebody's commercial batch and they're getting sold, I can understand that, but boy, uh, you know, to open them in a commercial shanty, if you have the means, that means it's a cleaner environment versus your back porch, which you see a lot of people do open their catch on their back or else you're right yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> um, we, view, we but, viewed it as a you know is not a, a regular occurrence yeah right, right. right. and and that the warden would know who was able to do this and would be able to you know track how many times is he going out every single week well maybe there's something up here mm -hmm. when was the last time this permit was issued anybody yeah, fair question. Good yeah, question. I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, all of the guys are going to get that question. Yeah, I will. Right. I'll follow yeah. up on that one. All right. Well, how, how much time you want to spend on debating this? Right? Right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Worry about. Yeah, that's a good mm. point. But you made to say, yeah, because it goes to enforcement. How much time do you want to spend enforcing something that gets used, you know, once in five years? So how many? For you, Dave, and for you, Jim, and Tara, how many people can you think of that would qualify to apply for that right I'm, now? I'm racking my brain right now, and I, I can't. I, I can't can remember think. at some of our first meetings that I joined this board eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, it was Lionel Starr sitting right in the front. But you know, uh, it's somebody you know, like Lionel, somebody, exactly. somebody like your somebody like your father. You know, you probably just get a license. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> and, and a lot of the, a lot of those old guys still buy licenses. You know, Jim, they buy a license. Jim Cracker, Cracker, you know, old Cracker. I mean, he's a perfect example. You know, guys like that. Oh, okay. Frank Marks, those guys. All right. Well, let's find out how many actually do it. Okay. Um. All right. We're moving on to page. 146 to harvest criteria by species. I'm just going to go over the quick changes. Um, so for um, soft shell clams, it says one 10 quart bucket or a quarter bushel. So, or a quarter bushel was added by JC. Um, and then also for method of harvest for soft shell clams, they he added, taking by shovel and plunger is permitted. Oh, no. This is the shovel. You're destroying. Right. It's better and than a ray. And a plunger, no. no. I totally disagree. What? N neither of those should be allowed. The, the plunger? No. Why? Well, you, you've seen it. I've seen it up, I've seen it up there at Quays. You know, they make these enormous holes to get two clams. Man. Oh, um. And I was looking at other other towns' shellfish regulation the other day, and the one thing that did stick out at me was no plungers. Interesting. Although I do know guys in Nantucket who had a rake on one end of the stick and a plunger on the other end of the stick. So a shovel is just, is, I mean, yeah, I hear what you say, Jim, but because of those times, but the shovel, you have just as much chance of splitting them as you dig in, right? Yeah, you got to do it certain, you do it just right. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Dave, uh, excuse me, you're seeing a bigger hole with a plunger than you are with a rake or a shovel? Just, yeah, that's my opinion. I mean, I've only plunged a couple of times. It's kind of, you have to have a pretty soft bottom to do it. Like most sandy places, like where we have soft shells, well, it's kind of hard to do with the plunger. Yeah, yeah. They won't come out. Unless it's, you got to have some kind of muddy bottom usually. Mm -hmm. I just think we ever just done it like really once or twice. I haven't done it at all. Yeah. But I, I know people should, that rave about it. So. I think we should check the state regulations and see what they say, and then we can make a decision based on that. I personally went out with a plunger and a shovel for razor clams about a month ago. The plunger was it's hard. It's hard to do to pull up that core sediment that's all wet. 
and the shovel was way more efficient because you would dig down and get one and then you would start to see some and you could oh. use your hands to go to the side. Um, so I felt like the shovel was good and all, out of all of them that we brought back, they're still alive in our broodstock room. So none of them like died from trauma or anything like that. So the shovel, you could just see where the, where the, where the holes are and dig around. If and, you know it, it'll shoot. Sure. probably what you, yeah, maybe that's what you yeah, maybe that's that's what you're again, but, kind of an education. I think you're, too, you're would you check the state reg about the plunger? Yep. Dave, Dave, don't you think, since what Jim just said and Tara just said, it's hard. So people are going to go, oh, yeah, let's get the plunger and then find out that it's hard and not do it. Yeah, I have a feeling you're I would, hard. I would say one thing about the plunger, you're going to destroy less shellfish probably than you would with the rake. That would be my opinion. You got to get down pretty deep, though, too, yeah. at least for the razor clams to do. Huh. Okay. I just okay, so we'll look at the state. Okay. All right, um, moving on. Could you, could you look at what the state requirement for the, for the catch limit is to... For a shelf yeah. for yep. soft shells. Yeah. I don't know what the, where he's why he's trying to right. add bush. We definitely will will compare all of these to the state ones just to make sure we're in line. Um yeah. razor clams, one to ten or one ten quart bucket or one quarter bushel was added. Um there was no taking by shovel or plunger. So again, just check the state regulations and just kind of make a decision on how we want to handle that as a town. Cool. So are we going to, if it doesn't go contrary to the state regulation, we're going to keep shovel and plunger, right? Um, we can decide if, if we want to. Okay. Let's see what the state says and we'll talk about it. Yeah, okay. you guys can. So the, can... the cog limits one quarter bushel also a day? What? Um, hmm. That's what it says here. I didn't think that. I thought it was one bushel per week. It was a half bushel. Oh, no more than a bushel per week. Yeah. So you're only allowed so to it's like per, per, day. Day. per day. Today or a bushel a week. Okay. That's and it's, it's it's never recreational. Day. Right. I don't think yeah. I've heard that before. Is JC out there making sure that everybody's? I mean, I don't, I don't even the best warden in the world would be able to keep up with everybody who's taking co ops, right? No, so, no, no, it's too no. hard. It's just it's yeah. why it's I just suggestion. We need to have. Part time seasonal shellfish wardens to help him out just to cover the ground. All right, oysters a quarter bushel per week. You can find them. And just a yeah, yeah, question about that. So, this morning I walked a lot of the beaches um, in the employee of the Natural Resources Department checking for strandings, and and, uh, and there were places where I saw oysters, but I mean, if you go and walk at that oyster farm, is the cages that are on the bottom in front of Pacamo Meadows. There are oysters all over the place that aren't in the cages. And isn't that Simon Edwards? Um, it's Emil. probably yeah, um, Emil. Emil, yeah. Emil, but they free plant. But mm -hmm. you're not going to, unless you see a sign that says keep out, you're going to say, oh, look, there's oysters in the water. I'm going to take those. Yes. But those grants are supposed happen. to be clearly marked. Mm -hmm. You should mark. I've never seen a sign there that says. Yeah. We will get to the, the aquaculture regulations. All right. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Move on. Conk. I mean, um, the wall, when it was places that the big buoys farm with the cages. Yeah. There's plenty of oysters there. Is it three inch? Sorry, is that the it's, limit for it's three. all oysters? Any um, well, if you're farming them, you can do two and a half inch. Okay. All right. So for conk, it got switched from 2.75 in width to basically consult the state regulations because it, it's changing a lot, like every couple of years. So it didn't make sense to have like one set width in there. Okay. Uh, here we go, Dave. Very wrinkles. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on to the next page. Green crabs. Um, Why did Luke call? Get uh, cross deleted. Please. I think because it was you stole the state by the state. Okay. Yeah, then that's what JC was saying, right? Telling us about Fulvis Harbor and. Mm -hmm. I will double check. They're all over. They may be people are catching like we have. They're enormous. Yeah, they're enormous. All right, um, green crabs. You need a letter of authorization from the DMF, and JC would like a copy of it. Um, and I'm going to add. Natural resources. Is that considered shellfish? 
What's that? Is that considered a shellfish? There's there's some other things on here that. Okay, so it's hot. You have to go through more to get rid of a species, 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 species that nobody wants. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Let's yeah. make it more difficult to get rid of. Right. Mm. All right, um, and that's it for that. So, part four, commercial shell fishing. Let's see. Not not to be a pain in the ass, but um. One place it says shellfish ward, and another place it says shellfish constantly. We just got to decide which which one they want to use. Okay. And we just taught this as part of master law course. It's just I like I'm I'm in that mode right now. Okay, is there a difference? How to keep you out of jail? Is there a difference in, in meaning between a between a constable and a warden? Yeah, it's whatever the state you're appointed as a shelter's warden for the town of Nantucket every three years. Under what's a constable? One thirty. There is no such a thing. Yeah, I could say I mean, a constable was. A con that's an old time police term. It's a, it's a right. It's a Commonwealth law. It, right, it was how you get to be a constable. You're right. Hmm. So is this letter of authorization for taking green crabs a, a DMF it requirement? Is. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what's a uh, sorry? There were carry winkles. But what's a winkle? <laughs> hey, a winkles. There's a variety of different types of snails. Yes. <laughs> Anything snails. not defined. And not to get too far off of it. No. <laughs> I think it's just like a blanket cover for. But not to get too far off the discussion, but like a couple of weeks ago, I was at Quays, gonna walk down there. There's a guy right down in front of that, you know, where the where the bulkhead ends there, and he had boots on. He had a bucket of half, he had a five gallon bucket of water, half full, and he was turning over rocks and picking something up from the rocks and putting them in there. <laughs> what would he be? Winkles. It could be limpets too. Limits, yeah. Hmm. To eat. But you know how many you'd have to have mm -hmm. to make a good broth? Right. Let's <laughs> like, think of worms or something. Oh, well, maybe. Know. A lot of worms. Um, anyway. Okay. Um, we are they're, in... they're not under rocks, but crepidula are delicious. Oh, those are delicious. I should say so. They are. Um, base golf regulations commercial, page 148, under. Uh, Base scout permit requirement. They just added you need to have all your required information complete. I guess it's been a problem. Um, and to pay in full with the town in Nantucket prior to 4 p.m. on March 31st. What do you mean required information? Just like there's you need your state permit, you need copies of like different types of ID. And I think people show up and they're waiting on their state permit in the mail and they don't have everything. And so it's just to clarify that you need everything. Is it too much to spell out what they need in here so, so there's no um, misunderstanding? I think that's a good idea. I mean, I would say that the, guy, the majority of the guys that are still going, plus, plus, I would say the majority of the guys that go now, are experienced and know what they need, but just in case. Yeah. But you you know, in under three, you're asking for some stuff there. Right. You can just add it to that list. So further down. Is that under under the apprentice? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, you you it's in blue, so you added it. <clears throat> All right, um, moving down to the apprentice commercial base belt permit requirement. Um, this is something that JC edited a lot. Um, originally, when we set up the apprentice program, I wanted um, people that were applying for the license and whoever was going to take them on their boat and be their mentor to attend like a quick preseason workshop just to go over like best management practices, because I think like some scallopers might teach things a different way, like might not be a conscientious like color and call close to shore or something like that. And 
So I just think there's like some key points you need to hit, but JC took that out. Um, and honestly, it was something that we never actually got around to doing anyways. Um, but I think it would be, I think it would be good if it was like, maybe not a class, but like spelled out on a form or something that these are the things you need to cover. Um, Why did JC was the primary editor because they are regulations that he enforces. Right. But we're, but, but these are regulations that we all advise on. Mm -hmm. And these are regulations that affect what you do. So you shouldn't be the only one that has anything to say. No, I know. We just edited these at different times. You, um, don't, you don't see anything wrong with the 10 and a three season. I don't. Plastic. I don't. You know, I think, I just think there needs to be some established guidelines like being like best management practices, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you could produce a document, best management document. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, I, I, I think that's it. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I know you're plowing along. It's Ginger. Um, I think it's a, a good idea to have a best management practice documents. And then if some of the fishermen have questions, they can talk to you guys. But one of the things uh, that I don't like to see is the um, uh, the, the scallops uh, sitting in dirty juice and really the rinsing of the the basket before you uh, put it into the box is is kind of crucial to getting a really good product. So um, I think that's something that might want to go in there. Just my opinion. Thanks. That sounds good. Definitely agree with that. Um, all right. The other things that were added: proof of forty fishing days shall include any combination of the following being directly checked by the town shelf warden, a catch report showing the harvest of both the mentor and apprentice with an accompanying harvester tag and sales receipt verifying the catch and date. Um, and then any, well, that's different. Any violation that occurs during the apprentice period shall make that day not count against the 40 required days. Yes. Yeah, like how, so, so is there, so, oh, how, many, how many bushels is the apprentice allowed to take during the apprentice? I think they're allowed to take a regular limit, okay. but what ends up happening is they give like free to the whoever's taking. Okay, them. I just haven't seen that one out. Mm -hmm. I can remember. We give three to the to to their mentor three. as like a thank you. But that's not. It's opened under their permit, but it's they're not required to do that. But they're doing it. I think it's up to the mentor to decide. You know, here's what's going to cost you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't so you're going to pay for the gas every day, or yeah. you'd rather do that. Is, is there a report that the warden fills out when he goes and checks one of these apprentices? There so that, is, that's a filed document to them. There is now. Okay. <clears throat> you guys have any other questions on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, uh, letter I on page one forty nine commercial base gallot limits. Um, the select board shall allow, oh, that was just she, she, yeah, the yeah, select board the, should allow the taking of five level bushels. This is the thing that I, I wanted to, yeah. it made a note that we need to um, wordsmith this so, so we have the flexibility. So the, because uh, someone said that they went to, I think it was Jeff said they went to town council and town council said, that no, the selectmen couldn't change the bushel number. And I want to make it so that it flex, I don't want the regulation to capture so they have the flexibility to change the number of bushels. For instance, if we want to, if we want to add, you know, uh, and I don't know if it's later on or Saturday, about the Saturdays, or we want to raise the limit to six bushel because we've got abundance of scallops. I want to have that flexibility. I thought we did in the past, but then when Jeff and I were talking about this the other night, <clears throat> I realized that the way this is written, they don't have that flexibility. But Dave, I know, I know, I know we had way back when I was. I know, I know we had. Yeah, way back when I was on the board, I know we went before the select board. Because because it was one year when we just had horrible we, weather. We did. We well, we, so, we we to to your point. We we did it. 
but then when about. when I questioned Carlson the other night about it, he said town council said you can't, and that's when I pulled the regulation up. And if you read the regulation, you're not supposed to. You can't. Well, we we right. did it. We well, we did it. We did it. We made it six boxes. We made it six boxes. We did. But, but we were we were advised that we got we we but we, we apparently it. got away with it. Just change it. And say so the, this, this may be changed at the discretion. We are well, trying to make a point. The point is that, that we did it, but illegally. We, we, yeah, apparently. No. Wait. <laughs> okay. Until I'm done saying it. I'm saying that. We did it and we were required to get a sign off from DMF. And when we got the sign off from DMF, then it was okay. There should be no sign from DMF. It's 10 votes to limit the state. That's what we have to do with them. That, that's 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 great, but that's what we had to yeah, do. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think we waited for a letter. Them. We but, also we also made a change. It's a town limit. Uh, temporary change where we added a week at the end. Yep. That has to go to the state. That has to go to the state. Yeah. But a town a town limit should not have to go to the state. The state's ten bushels. Right. Yeah. The state's ten bushels. So I, I think, think that should be town. I think the problem is is that the five bushel limit is written in the bylaw, right. and the bylaw is different than changing a regulation, from what I understand. So. The, the, there's that confusion there. I and see. so we need to go back and get the flexibility within the bylaw in order to be flexible within the regulation. So that's on the town meeting then. Yeah, bylaw the change has to go to town meeting. I mean, they certainly have to limit before in the past. Right, right. Remember but I think like the, the fact that we just need to be flexible within our limits, either up or down, is where we need to be at. Absolutely. So however we can get there. And do we have that we, with this? Should we go ahead and change it here? And, and, and then work on the bylaw later. You yeah, had I'll you had word, you had that. good word. Well, yeah, the discretion of the it, it, it's says it's five unless changed at the discretion of the select board. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking in the um, or upon recommendation from the us, yeah. right? And approval by the select board because yeah. it's going to come to us. Guys are going to be lined up at the door mm -hmm. saying we want to fish. We want we we think that there's six bushel out there. We're going to say to her, what do you think? She's going to say yes or no. We're going to support that. And then it's going to go to the select. So, you know, yeah. as recommended by the Harbor Shelf Advisor, the board approved by the board of select. Right. It is It is in the town regulations and that, that it's uh, five. In the bylaw. In the, 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 the town code. It's it's, yeah. it's five. Five bushel shells included. The board shall allow five bushel shells included. Of the township group boxes so it's basically the same wording we have here but this is this is in the town code now so that will have to be adjusted to make it also at the discretion right the state yeah. says 10 but that's and we can go up but we still we have to change like right we have to change the bylaw yeah we have to change the bylaw okay. was not flexible but what it would do is we'll change it here and then, and then use that yeah as a the same wording in the bylaw, in the bylaw at town like meeting, at town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. See, regulations are nice because you have a public hearing and then they go into effect. You don't have to wait the label. <clears throat> we should probably also put in there saying five little bushels and up to the state limit of okay. 10. So you can't, you know, right. it is so, no confusion past that. Right. <laughs> okay. You got it. Okay. You got it. All right. Um, letter K. This is a big one for me, the use of dredges for commercial base scallops. Um, I'm more interested in the fact that the design has changed for certain scallopers of the dredge. So what we define here in, this, in the regulations doesn't necessarily represent what is being fished with. And I think it's important to document as a change in you know, the fishing type of dredge fishing method. I think it's important to note the weight on these dredges, which I, I have no idea how much they weigh, but the description that we have here just doesn't represent what people are fishing with anymore. And I think, I'm not saying that the new dredges are, are good or bad. I have no idea, but I think it's worth a conversation in exploring what people are using. And what, 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 you know, what's the, what, what are they using that's so much different? Well, Chatham style, style dredge. I'm sorry. Is Chatham this what I'm saying? Okay. Pressure plate. Right with a plate. And the pressure plate doesn't actually, well, you don't use like a traditional um, bar sweep as a chain sweep or a roller sweep. 
And the idea of the pressure plate is actually to create turbulence behind the plate, lift the sculps. It doesn't actually like make the dredge dig more. They actually put fish cleaner than a yeah, they do because it skids on that. And it, I see, and it, yeah, it flips the scallops up into the bag. So I think on here, the regulations say no dredge greater than 20 inches in width. Greater than? Say that again. It says no dredge greater than 28 inches. It should say 28 inches in width. Oh, right, right. Or you could say 20 inches sweep or, or cutting bar or whatever you want to word it. So better do. Okay. Two inches wide will be okay. Um, it does say wide later on, actually. Isn't, oh, it, does. isn't it true yes. that the new dredges you only need to use like four instead of eight because they're more efficient? Is that true? Uh, I mean, you can tow as many as you want. I mean, um, you're usually tow a little faster, so you cover them more bottom. Um, but yeah, you usually don't need to fish eight. I don't think anyone's fishing eight, yeah, plate dredges. Have you seen, besides that dredge that you just described, have you seen any other types of variations out there? We had a um, we had a couple scuba divers come and say that they've seen like two different variations of the of the uh, dredges, but I've only seen the one that you guys have been using. I haven't really. I mean, maybe the roller sweep one, but I haven't tried that early myself. Okay. I've, got, I've actually got by both of those types with the rollers and the plate. They're hanging on my bar. I mean, I think like, you know, when scallop season used to start, I know there used to be an inspection process that Sheila and the warden would do where they would go and make do a safety check on each boat. And we but, used to weigh the dredges. And weigh the dredges. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a good way to just kind of document what people are using. And because to Jim, Jim's point, as as we all know, you put two window weights across there with some rubber bands on them and, and make the thing dig. Mm -hmm. But I don't know too many guys that are doing that. I mean, when when well, you do that, you do tall. tear up the grass. Mm -hmm. But I think you, you, to your point, the the, the the bar, that plate, you know it. It flips the scallops up, and it doesn't take, and it doesn't take as much horsepower to drag it. Um, I like back to your point, Dave, about the weights. I mean, I mean, obviously, Jason could have a scale in his truck or whatever, and hang a hang scale or whatever, yeah. hanging out the apron. And they have they have weight dredges for. I mean, I've never seen him do it, but I know he has. Um, I think maybe not just the weight thing, but like bigger issue be guys towing dredges for too long. Yeah, like oh, causing yeah. destruction that way by having a full dredge for yeah. twenty minutes towing around, and that's where like More the best, than anything. the best management right. practices would come in. You know, talking about that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, do you think that we should have like a uh, pre-season inspection? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, most and then also describe new dredges. I don't know. I don't I, know how you do that. I think I think we just need to keep it simple to the the, the weight the weight thing. Make sure they're underweight. It's weight and size, thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. weight and size. I mean, I don't think anyone's fishing huge dredges. I mean, I don't like big dredges. They're awkward. <laughs> but myself, I, like from a fishery standpoint, I think it's like interesting that yeah. it's changed. I think you it's know, like, less grass. Yeah, I think it's inspections so are going to let you see the changes now. Yeah, and and watch them watch any new ones come along. I, and I think that's better than trying to. Okay. Like, well, what here. happens when you weigh a dredge and find out that it's five or six or seven or ten pounds over? Does that mean that throw it out? It cut it. It cut it. It cut it off. Or you tell them to take it. Or it, mainly, what happens is they take the window weights off the front. I'm just kidding. I think I think there was regulations at one point that said no tooth dredge could be used. I don't know if that's in here or not. But if you if you had that with the harbor master and the shellfish warden, you know. Check their safety stuff. Let me see your life jacket. Where's your flares? You know, blah blah blah. Right. Yeah, well, by, the, well, by the way, the flag is going to be here, and the temperature, you know, is here. And let's weigh your dredge. I mean, you you can cover yeah. a lot of ground in fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, how many how many boats? I want to be a shellfish for <laughs> How many boats? I'll hire you. How many boats total this year? Do you think how many how many? I mean, it's twenty five the most. I think the last time I I walked up harbor, that I actually saw nine boats. Yeah. Up there, yeah. and some someone was working way up on um, the far end of third bend, and then everybody else was yeah. back in. So, 
so starting many, off the season, how many boats? 30? Yeah, maybe 30. Whereas so when, much, yeah. when you would do the inspections before, it'd be double that amount. Yeah, we used, what we used to do is we just, everybody would just, we'd do the ones on the boat race and then we'd have everybody, you know, we'd do a bunch of children's beach and then we'd have the rest of them drive by the town pier. We'd do it right at the town pier. And we, do we make it whenever the yeah. inspectors can do it or do we make it in a certain window of days? That's for natural resources. I think the set up the schedule. No, oh, okay. Just, yeah, I don't think it's something we would regulate and ask to regulate. All right. Are we still allowing? It's highlighted here. Are you still allowing eight dredges per boat? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you said nobody. I think I just you. put like a comment there. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's a lot. It is a lot. And I mean, how? How? Some guys to twelve. Well, they still do 12? They used to touch 12. I mean, can't, but well, uh, a fisherman will argue, and Cone is probably listening in good on this, that you know, the, the more dredges you're towing, the less toes you have to make. And so... Uh, do they damage? Do, do more do damage or no? I mean, I would say like this day and age, probably, I guess, like Jim said, you know, I guess it depends on how long you... How long you How full they get. Right? Yeah. So how about I leave that highlighted and we can maybe discuss that a little bit more. Did you say somebody was towing 12 dredges? They used to. Oh, they used to. Okay. You know, Steve Scannell towed dredges that had a wood bar and a green mesh he net. He certainly did. Right? I mean, I'm seeing an eight and, oh, a piece and, of hauls. Hauls. and a piece of PVC. And hauls. Yeah, and hand hauls. I mean, sometimes you're just down mm -hmm. to the efficiency mm -hmm. part. Like you can catch them just as fast as four and you can pay depending. You're making two toes though. You know, exactly. so how fast you can handle them and does a novice have a better chance with eight dredges than with four if they don't know what they're doing? I learned better with four than eight, yeah. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to Conk and Welk on page 152. I know that Dan Pronk and probably Matt and Jim Ellis want to weigh in on this um, before it's finalized. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, people that have commercial permits with these types of shellfish um, you know, we should seek their opinion mm -hmm. for review. Um, okay, so it's just saying that the minimum size shall be the same as the state. And then um, this part, part G, is so you are allowed to fish Nantucket and Matticut Harbor, but there's only a certain number of pots that are allowed in each harbor, and they're traditional. Yeah. For the record, nobody is talking right now, but when there were three people, there was one person in um, Madigan Harbor and two people would fish every other year in Nantucket Harbor. Um, and so they're just saying like, if you're not gonna fish and you wanna transfer your tags, you need to let natural resources know in a written form. Um, and for, for Scott and for Dave, that wasn't a regulation. That was a self-regulation by the by the fishermen because they realized that there wasn't enough to catch if all three went out and set all their pots every single year. And we had when we did the regulations again. I mean, it's a baby long thing about how we how we make that continue to work as well as how do we keep the it's when Bill Blount was on the board. How do we keep the, the vineyard fishermen from coming into the harbor in Madigan Harbor and fishing for conch because it's it's a state regulated fishery as well. And so people technically someone from the vineyard could come in and answer the harbor and, and go for conch. And did. And, and did. did. And we got the we got the environmental police officer at the time, which is a guy named Keith Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Um to listen to us and more or less agree that if he saw anybody who was not from here to shoo him away. One of the problems was is we didn't have a conch fishery for a long time. Yeah. Then all of a sudden we had three, and we had to you know scurry around and get the vineyard used to set. This is not a word of a lie. The vineyard guys would come over. They set right along the main channel, right along the main channel, and yeah, along Dionysus. Yeah, just to uh, just just to wind us up. And the food got and the food fishermen. It's a bycatch that you're right. allowed to take. So. So there was all this pressure from the outside, and, um, and Bill Blount drove me crazy, saying, "We own our own waters, all that stuff." And Except it was a state fishery. Um, yeah. I think we should put some clarification under H 
where it says all plots must be tagged mm -hmm. and write tagged with state and town tag, okay. and town tag too, or just state tag or what? Um, I think that needs to be clarified though. Yeah. If that came an issue one time before somebody. Okay. Got it. Do you know what the number of pot, how many pots each is <clears throat> they're fishing each? You're allowed 200 state permit. Mm -hmm. 200. Oh. But, but we're limited to 90. They're limiting themselves. The harbor. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're limiting themselves. They don't. So they're in the harbor. It's 30 first. We don't say that they. Yeah. Is that, isn't that right, Tara? Yeah, right. they decided on 30 per person for the harbor. Because of the resource not being. Yeah, and gee, it says there's, there's, there is a maximum of 90 pots in the so 30, right, 30, 30 but, tags, but they're setting the rest of the pots outside, yes, yeah, yeah. Right. all right. That's what that, that I guess that's what I that was my clue. We're mm -hmm. we're it's not 90, it's not 90. Okay, does Dan check the email? Does anybody know? Yeah, Brock, maybe uh, we can send this for maybe. you. Should should that also maybe be, uh, say, 30 per license holder, in case there's ever four? Okay. I don't know if that's a issue, but. Okay. Here's the four. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I was reading it like <laughs> each each license holder gets 90. This is the way I kind of saw it here, but. Being specific can't hurt. Well, so this this doesn't say that. This says it won't it won't exceed ninety. And if we if we get ten permit holders, then everybody can get you know nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says. Okay. Is that what? It was that the intent? That, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Be, so okay. only nine. Right. We've been talking about the three that that fished, so it's yeah. thirty, but it's yeah. not really okay. Yeah. If that was the intent, that's good. Okay. All right. I like that. All right. Other shellfish species. If you take it commercially, there will be a three hundred dollar fine and a confiscation of your catch. Which one's that? Right um, it's right yeah. under the just one down. right under H two sixty. All right. Can we say somewhere what other what other what's under other. I a good question about the how's the how's the town uh, you know what I mean? how's the town allowed to regulate you know, the crabs? Are you talking about the green crabs? Or just in general crabs. I don't know. I don't Is that know. actually legal? I'm, I'm not sure, but I'll check. Okay. Does that mean that would you consider crustaceans? I mean, you're talking yeah, about herring crabs, lobsters. Yeah. But sir, I mean, whatever. originally, originally, like that's. Crabs and shellfish were all included right. on your and, and eels okay. and back eels. in the day. Uh, okay. Yeah. Eels just got dropped like yeah, it was a shellfish and eel permit for a million years. Are there are there <clears throat> basic regulations still printed on the back of the mm -hmm. recreational permit? Because it's just a button, not just button. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's wrong. wrong. So they don't get a paper permit? I don't think so. Is there a pamphlet for people to get for, for, with the Well, I go in permit? and get my license every year and nobody knows who I am. And they ask me every year, <laughs> they're like, would you like a booklet? And I'm like, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So well, it's they optional. have that. Okay. okay. That's good. That's good they have it though, right? That's good. But they do have a booklet. Well, it's not, yeah, they have a. So okay. that's just okay, no kind of you not this was the bust on them. You had so many opportunities <laughs> in the sarcasm. This is the argument that we had the other <laughs> night about the more information, more education. Do you like to find it three hundred bucks, or is that the state limit, or where are all the time? I will. I will tell you that when we go over violations and stuff, I feel like yeah. a lot of the fines that were assigned were a little arbitrary. So, okay, okay. Maybe we can review them as a whole after we get through some of them. But what are you referring to? Other shellfish? I think it ought to say any other shellfish. Like, I'm not referring to anything. I'm just going over it. I did not put that down. Okay. Well, then. Whoever puts that down, I mean, like, maybe you should say all other. Then. Well, it's other. I think if you don't have a permit, like if you're going for scallops and you come up with a ton of cohogs and, yes. well, I guess that would be considered by catch then. So this, where was I? I was 
Well, this is in the it's in I was the cutting out. section. I was coming back from Smith's Point, mm -hmm. and we were just about to turn up and walk up the Massachusetts Ave to go back to my van. And there was a guy in the water with a bucket, taking adult scallops and putting them into the bucket along with razor clams. He had cohogs in there. He had maybe some soft shell clams and some clams that I didn't recognize. And he had the bucket, and clearly it wasn't for kids to play with. He was taking it with him. There was nobody there to, to bust him, but I mean, I just think. Probably didn't have a permit either. Any, no, any kind of permit. Refuge. We get that all the time out at the refuge. We get all these guys coming out there, taking crabs, taking clams. And well, we don't enforce, we're told not to enforce any regulation, any town regulations out there. There's a lot of cohorts in, the, in the lagoon. Fishing. Um, but I'm just saying, the more you spell it out, the better. Okay. That's just my, what I think. You don't have yeah, to. should you say it, all other or any okay. other no fisher crab shall not be taken? I don't know. It's, Where are they getting It's crabs? like somebody yeah. ran out. Somebody ran out of gas. Yeah. The pond sound cuts. Yeah, the pond. Whatever. Right, right. Now the pond. These are these are close in. These are by um um. Uh, just past the hollow, but really the, the first pines you come in there by one, yeah, oh, marsh, marsh, yeah, marsh, yeah in the about. marsh, and they walk out there and they're not just the one, not the one, not the first one, but they keep on going out to the uh, southwest and most of the west, and um, and they trudge out through all past all the you know don't walk here signs, and these guys go way out there and come back with buckets of these monster blues. Man, I would just be like, sorry, I'm taking those from you. No, we're not. We're told. We're told not to enforce. We don't. You should at least take a photo and, and send it to JC. Or I don't know. No, JC. Well, if you're legally been, catching blue crab, then right. That, they're, they're not legally. They're legal. Crab. They're they're meeting state regulations on yeah, blue crabs. No, yeah, they're, they're, they're legal. So. Well, maybe the maybe what we do is. And now um, we don't have a. <laughs> maybe it's the thing that we get. We tell JC that you need that post post the But sign. he can't. He can't do any. He can't do anything real. I mean, he can't get out there, right? Nobody can get out there. You can post it. The refuge probably trustees probably won't let you post stuff out there. It's private property. I bet Diane would. Yeah. She knew what, what, what the deal was. But she, she's aware it's going on, and yes. that's, she's one of the ones told us we can't. Oh. Don't don't get involved. Is that, is that a private entity or state entity? What it's private. Private. private, private, private yeah. 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 Okay. How late are we going? Yeah. Well, ways we need to. Uh, All right. I um, mean, uh, continue on. Prefer not to go past okay. seven, but if we have business to take care of, All right. let's, let's get going. Let's talk, yeah. Okay. So um, we're moving on to aquaculture guidelines and one of the problems that we've had um, is when there is a problem with a leaseholder um, that is not making um, their production minimum requirements and so i think you guys are probably familiar you know with the situation where it hasn't been really um clarified as to the steps that need to be taken with limits in the procedure and so i think that's something that you know if this happens then you'll go through you know you'll go to shav and then you'll go to the board of selectmen like i think it should be like called out exactly what the steps are because i i feel like a lot of this can be arbitrary you know when you're trying to decide if the events are really beyond the control of the holder you know like it's it's hard i thought i thought the process was defined i mean we when we spent a year and a half doing this it, it was kind of a defined process uh because after us it went to the select board I feel like they, it, of course, reversed it. And... Yeah, I feel like it went back and forth a lot. Oh, well, yeah. we did. Yeah, it's absolutely. Um, where it says here. This is um, failure to, well, under waiver of production requirements, which is. Can we, page can we go back up one second? Um, we're on page 153. Can we go back up one, one second where it says process of approval of aquaculture license? It said the, the select board or its designee. I think it should say the select board. It, it we we should be because aren't we aren't we going to recommend approval of the license? Yes. Then we then it, the designee should be us. 
But the select board has to ultimately sign off on it, right? I'm sorry. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. So we right. we go through the process of looking at the application and we say, all right, this is great. What do you think, Tara? And, you know. Right, but it should, should say the select board, or uh, the select board, <coughs> Harvard itself will, will accept and process applications uh, on see. recommendation of the Harvard. Uh, it, should, it, it should mention that it comes here first, and then we, if that's what, if that's the intent, that's what I'm trying to do. Right, to. right. That that um, uh, they will accept process the application after it has been presented to Harvard Shellfish Board and. That's where I'm, that's, that's where I'm trying to get to. Okay. We know that's what's that is what's happening now, but right. we should memorialize that, and then we can weed out any of the problems ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. You know about weeding out problems, so you know <laughs> they're the ones that had to review. All right. How now, they went? Where were you? You you so were I was on one fifty three, looking at the waiver of production production requirements. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe you guys don't think that it needs to be clarified, but I, I thought the process, my own opinion is the process, it worked. It took us a long time, but a year of that was us bending over backwards. Yes. Um, and then, then we decided to go back and forth with the select board, which is going to happen anyway. I think no matter what, you know, we decide to do, because I, I think the failure might've been ours that we didn't present them clearly enough with, with all the work we had done and what we what we thought, uh, and I think they kind of jumped into it without understanding the year we'd spent beforehand. Do you um, think three consecutive years is okay? <laughs> um, I think so because it's like a three year product. So I, I think that's where that came from. And you can have like a failure in a year, you know, that you lose everything, especially if you're a new right. farmer. So. so you kind of need to have that three year yeah. drop out of the trial. Okay. okay. I can maybe comment. So yeah. something in there that says like maybe four years from initial start of lease. Maybe Say again. Like four years from your initial start of your lease. It's like a long time to type a lease. Maybe three. Okay, maybe three is okay, maybe three's the correct number. Well, if they get the size they'd really like, if we're talking oysters, it's a two-year product. It's true. Right. But well, they are whittling it down. Growing a different kind of shelf. It takes longer to grow. Maybe that could be it. Yeah. And right, and right below that, it. it says, you know, okay. to, to your point, it says, you know, she'll have the right to waive minimum production requirements. So, you know, if you do have a bad storm that wipes everything, everybody's right. going to know that. Maybe species. I guess three three's fine if you have that. Right, answer. right. Yeah, right. That's, exactly. I think that's fine. So is, do we, it's pretty broad. I don't want to be paying ass, but events. Mr. Chairman? Beyond the control of the license holder, there's a lot of things that, that the person coming before us could say. Could say. I mean. That's why it took us a year, right? That's yeah. exactly what happened. And, and we did. We all worked through it for a year. And, and the things that were beyond that person's control, I understood those were. But I'm just saying that people could come in. Um, Ginger? Oh, uh, well, I, I would, it's a little tricky because uh, one of the things that I found frustrating about that particular situation was that uh, each time uh, we had a request uh, to extend the time, uh, it was for a month. And it, it, you know, so how many times do you, do you do that? Uh, it just didn't seem like there was, I mean, I, I know there were extenuating circumstances mm -hmm. now, but um, you know, at the time it, it seemed kind of frustrating. So, you know, I think it was like a year and a half. So that's, you know, 12 or more requests. It was, the, that's why there was so much back and forth. So I, I don't know, I don't have a specific remedy, but I'm, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, part of the problem was that there was gear on the bottom. Uh, you know, there was broken stuff getting, you know, in, in the way of, well, anyway, so, you know, it depends on what the what the problem is. Uh, you know, a little bit. Thanks, Ginger. What does it talk about? Um, oh, here it is. All right, moving on. 
The next one is Jeff would like to omit this. Um, no harm to endangered species federal law exists. So, you know, he's thinking the federal law will cover it. I think this comes into play because of all the bird deterrent um, studies and things that are going on that the DMF is telling the growers that they need to use these bird deterrents and some of them will intentionally threaten terns, you know, because either they're using propane cannons, we're not using those, or they're, you know, using things that are really? preventing birds from, you know, landing on their gear and eating and I don't know. So. Oh, so it's redundant based on. It's redundant based yeah. on the federal law. I, I, I would tend to agree with Jeff. It is, I mean, it's redundant. It, it doesn't hurt to leave it here, but it doesn't, it's meaningless really, because, um, you know, a lot of harm endangered species, it's federal law. So some people need reminding. That's kind of weird, though. Yeah, but but who reads this besides us, right? It's there. It's there as regulation, but nobody sits down and reads it and goes, "Oh, Jesus, I'm not supposed to harm endangered species." I saw it here. Um, I, I, to me, it's as I say, it's harmless. But uh, I see Jeff's point. Sure, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Ginger. Yeah, I, I, part of the, you know, if if you get a whole flock of oyster catchers. Eating on your on your gear, yeah, that's that's a problem for the fishermen, but it's also endangered species. I don't know exactly what they're uh, allowed to use for bird deterrence, whether it's some kind of a you know excluder like we put for the you know to protect the plover nest sometimes, or um, you know sometimes just going to check it is enough to 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 make the birds uh, flush, which is you know. People walk on the beach all the time, whether they're fishermen or not. So, you know, that's just, you know, uh, if there's, uh, you know, fencing to keep people from walking. I mean, I don't I don't really know what those requirements would be. Uh, so I'm, th I'm thinking about you know, things not to use, like if you go to the bottom of Ram Pasture and there's a bunch of signs along the way that are that are. Conservation Foundation signs telling you what you're looking at on the edges of those signs are spines. Mm -hmm. So the birds don't land one prick and they're like, I'm out of here. Well, so you don't want you don't want that because that's going to cause harm. Well, what do you mean? So I'm just I'm just thinking of the things that they would be talking about. Right. And then like you think well, about what they have on boats with a spinning, spinning thing. But what, what would you be able to have on a float anyway? You're not going to have an owl there, you know. I mean, people do, and they're looking at yeah. laser arrows and all kinds of stuff. Really? Don't, don't they use some kind of like kite thing too? With mm -hmm. like a, yeah. Okay. What is spikes? It, what are they using spikes now? now? And the right now they're not using anything because the DMF hasn't enforced it, and mm -hmm. nothing has been working. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> the birds pooping. Does it cause harm to the oysters? That's the problem. That's what DMF well, said. it's it's a. Uh, they think that it is a liability, although we've never had like a failed water quality test up there on the oyster lease. So it's kind of like why our oyster, our, our, our clamming gets all shut down yeah. because of the boats, even though perceived <laughs> risk. Right. No. Yeah. 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 Procedure. Um, all right. Okay. But this thing where it says grants shall be marked. Yep. You want that to be more, it's crazy, uh, more identifiable than a float. Well, I don't know why it says black in color. That seems silly to me. Um, I don't know how that made made the final review because it's not visible. But um, I think, you know, originally we had like yellow poly balls and we have these big, um, you no know, shell fishing or aquaculture loose buoys that we put on the four corners of the grid up there. But I don't think we extended it over to the Pocomo Meadows area. So I think this is something that we need to change to be visible and then just have everybody and we purchase the stuff. They just have to put it in. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I would I, I, I just put that in there, right? That you all apply it. All licensees shall mark the corners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the provided, you know. With yeah, with provided um appropriate marking. Well, even it says here the corners shall be marked with toad ball approved by the natural resource department. Just, just say change that to provide. provide it. It. 
provided yeah. by the National. Okay, got it. Okay, but I thought, didn't up above here, didn't you change that to natural? <clears throat> oh, oh, up in the one right above that, it says Department of Natural Resources. Oh, yeah, okay. but it was changed earlier. You're right, I caught that. Yeah, yeah. it was changed the Natural Resources Department. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on, displaced gear retrieval. JC added this um, failure to remove gear. This is like, you know, if there's a a big windstorm and a cage breaks free and it ends up on Pacamo point. Um, he's saying that if you ends up on code two. don't remove it, then he's going to charge you $300 per cage to remove it. And I can honestly say that there have been a few cages here and there that have ended up there, but usually it's just a phone call and people go get their cages because there's at least 1,200 oysters in each cage. Yeah. So yeah. they don't want to yeah. they don't want to lose it or have people steal yeah. them. They just the cage leaves pretty quickly when they're told where it is. Yeah. So I don't know if it's I you know. I disagree with that. Um, I think that this is like anytime you call out a uh, you know a violation in a fine amount, I think it should just go in the table where. The violations and the fine amounts are and not be like great. Yeah. otherwise well, they'll get out of sync yeah, and, yeah. and can, yeah. can and one can a warning be given by the shellfish warden before yeah, it should be course. at the discretion of the warden because yeah. if it's out but, there and you obviously you want that gear back and but it's not saying that here no but i don't think it should yeah. say, it, i don't think it should say that at all there it should be down in the general yeah. fines down in the fines but i tell you to remove a displaced gear could result in the warning Second or a fine up there. And three hundred yeah. per piece. Somebody, somebody's. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a. I'm going to have a problem with that. It's really the three hundred dollars is a standard town fine for. But but it's, it's per piece. It's per high piece. one though. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's so you got three cages. It's going to yeah. cost me nine hundred bucks. And it's kind of silly because the stuff they want back. Exactly. Right. right. Kind of, yeah. Well, and there's so much beach to cover. Uh, you, you you may not know it's gone. You may not know where have to it find is. it right away. That's yeah. where well, I. Well, that's feel. the other thing. That's we're always pinpointing where they are. Too. Yeah. Just yeah. leave that off there. Plus, yeah, I would just take that line. storm and it's agree. devastating, and there's right. tons of cages. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, JC understands that that this happened, and it's not that I'm being a bad bad oysterman and just ignoring that. You know, well, that's why I feel that. A, a warning that yeah. after one warning, you can't find you until he has given you a warning and maybe even a certain amount of time 24 hours to remove it, 48 you hours. You get out of the situation where the person's away or something, and you can't get yeah. But that's in the that's in the that's in the shellfish warden's uh well discretion, but it's the also discretion. in their training and everything else, you yeah. know. Um, this whole section is something that I think the growers should all, you know, look at as well and, and weigh in on. Okay. The next one is um, sinking of floating gear for the winter. So the guys that are up harbor are in, you know, 20 feet of water. So by December 15th, they're supposed to have all their gear sunk to the bottom. Um, you know, assuming that maybe ice will come, if it's not sunk, it will cause problems um, for everybody. The, the the reason why I highlighted this, this works fine, like everybody's been doing it, but I highlighted it because there isn't like a raising date and I don't know if it's necessary. Most people are up like the first week of April or April 15th, but there isn't anything in here that says you can't bring it up January 1st, you know? Okay. So I don't know if that needs to be clarified or not. Um, maybe the aquaculture people can weigh in on it. Um, I think it does because the previous person that we dealt with, the situation was there was a lot of gear on the bottom. And if you have a date when it has to be up, yeah, then you're going to be thinking about that. And and yeah. you don't want to have gear stuck down there and not be able to get it up. And you don't want to run into the situation that that person ran into. So maybe, maybe you, you talk to the um, the fishermen and ask them, you know, what, what's, what's, what's a good date? Well, what, what date don't you want to go beyond? Well, you can well, do it out. It's two must, dates. Must be really. sunk yeah. and secure yeah. by December two 15th more days, three days. until, comma, until right. you fill in the date after you talk to the fisherman. Because once, I mean, after a certain point and the water's warming up, the algae starts to grow and then right. it's down on the bottom. So. Right. so if these guys say April 15th is going to be the latest I'm going to pull my gear, then we plug in December 15th yeah. to April 15th unless... 
natural resources deems it necessary to do something else. Well, make sure you tell them, Tara, that it, it's it's those guys that are going to determine what the data is. Yeah. We, you want we don't, your input for that. But it doesn't yeah. have to, we don't get it. It doesn't yeah. have to be up by a certain date. You just don't want it to come back up before a certain date. Before, right. See, right. See, there are three, that's what I say, yeah. there are three dates. There's a yeah. date you want it down by, the date you, you can't come up before this date, and then the final date is when it all it should up, it should be up top. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. you don't top. Yeah. But don't they bottom grow some? Well, well, the only thing I'm thinking of, if you know, some people raise their gear up in February and it's all floating in the mornings, and then you get a windstorm and it drives well, drop, people's they, stuff that's on the bottom, down. that yeah. would be a problem. I'm not. Yeah, it's a question whether it's that big a concern. I think your first concern was that it comes up too early. That's yeah. what I heard. And I think that's the biggest thing. I yeah. think that is the biggest thing that stop it from coming up too early. And and they're not going to want it down there getting algae all over it. They're going to want it up top. And if they need to drop it for a windstorm, they're going to drop it back in. Wash. Yeah. I like it. Unless they're both breaks down for a like of time. They're both. Can't get out to bring it up by April 15th. Then you have to hire somebody. Right. Good. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, the next one is hydraulic harvesting of shellfish. Let me be a pain in the ass. Ex where it says exception for ice and our, you, you got to be consistent. It's got to say shellfish warden shall have the authority. Okay. Verbal change on shellfish. All right. All right. Um, hydraulic harvesting of shellfish from grant areas. Um, I highlighted in that first little blurb, it says from within boundaries of license area permitted under following conditions with the following restrictions. Um, there was one instance um, this summer where there was a boat in Pulpus Harbor um, power washing all of their oyster gear that was like in the mooring area, not like on the grant area. So I don't, you know, I know that a lot of people do power wash on their lease, um, but I think it should say that you need to do that on your well, lease. Least we had we actually had that at the refuge too. We came in and then they were told to get off the property and they just went out where it's a foot deep and worked out there, which is fine. It's not our coverage, but um but yeah, I think that's a really good idea is where, keeping where, up. Where, where what section are you looking at? I'm sorry. I'm sure that's just the next page, page page two six hydraulic yeah. harvesting. Yeah. Four point seven okay, one. Use the okay, so it shouldn't it say <clears throat> To your point, shouldn't it just say that? Uh, I mean, just say it. All, all activity should be within the, the grant area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. All activity would be contained within the grant area. I or your grant area, grant area. I because what if I wanted to go? That's a good point. Resources. No, with, within your licensed area. You're right. I think pressure washing cages. You could. Uh, I mean, you're not harvesting shellfish or anything. But I mean, I would think you could do a limit from the shoreline. Maybe like if you're driving back into Pulpus Harbor, you want to pressure wash your way there, trying to save time. I don't see that being an issue as long as you're not doing it like at the beach uh, for hours at a time. You're not on somebody else's property, right? As long right. as you're not doing it like you think it's okay to like be in a mooring. Like, I I feel like the the part that I'm worried about are like the neighbors and stuff because right. it's like. A noise that you're that's not usually there. Sure. People expect it on the aquaculture lease, but they might not expect it on you know on, on a morning while they're trying to have lunch. Maybe yeah. you can see okay, yeah, sure. I just think it's like a best management practice thing there too. Yeah. Could bad could bad stuff be washed off and contaminate other shellfish? I mean, I, mean, I think you're just adding nutrients to the water. Um, oh. you know, I don't think it's like a reasonable request to ask people to bring their gear home. We do it, but we're very small compared to everybody else. So, I so think... they either do it on their grant or they take it home. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's whatever is on, what, whatever they're washing off their cages. It grew there. <laughs> it's already in the water. Yeah. Right. So probably you're killing it and then it's sinking to the bottom. Right. So that's probably not a good idea. Okay. Either. No. I'm a little confused in the wording of this. The use of hydraulic harvesting gear. The purpose of harvesting shellfish. I think it's talking about like the the davits and stuff. Okay. That they're using to pull up pages. They're using electric. You're not. <laughs> What's it say? Well, I'm just clarifying. We're using hydro 
I, I would consider the hydraulic harvesting more of like using pressure pump to blow coax out of the dam. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. not, so not, yeah. not pressure washing your cages. Because you're not really harvesting anything at that point. You're maintaining your equipment. So you say, you should say pressure washing. Okay. Because I mean, if somebody wants to, I mean, for another example, okay. somebody wants to pressure wash boats to clean them instead in Pulpus Harbor, mm -hmm. somebody has their pressure wash from their boat, you can tell them they can't do that, but the guy's okay. oystered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I like it. All right. Anything else for that? All right. I think that's. Governments have been by other than license. What, is, um, what does that mean? So it's disturbance of grant other than licensee. It's it, I, it's basically if somebody is like trespassing or messing with your gear, um, taking your oysters. <clears throat> yeah, yes. I highlight it and I just wrote describe disturbance, but I don't know because basically it's trespassing. That's what we're we're talking about trespassing on grant. Mm -hmm. And then there should be a fine spelled out in the fine section for people who trespass on, on someone's grant. Okay. But the, 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 the guys that are out at the head of the harbor, do they have signs or anything like that on there? They don't. Cages? Have there ever been incidents of people actually going out there in boats and stealing oysters? No. More likely they happen to the guys that are parking on meadows, right? Yeah. Just wait right. out there with a bag. I think, I mean, exactly. yeah. I think more of the disturbance or annoyance is maybe like related to skateboarding and stuff, people going through the cages and jumping mm -hmm. them and, oh. you know, creating a liability probably. Mm. Boy. That sort of thing. That stuff goes on. And, maybe it. It. and yeah. water yeah. skiers, like yeah. behind well, the, well, the cages. Yeah. <laughs> Can I jump the but, it's, but, but just five seconds of history, that's why it's where it is. Yeah. yeah, it was approved because it was, a, you know, not there was there be a non competing uses. uses. Not today, man. Not to, no, not today. No, you're a good point. 30 <laughs> years ago, so, for yeah. example, it'd be never ending. Uh, yeah, there was a anyway. Yeah, I, mean, mean, I told you guys about really, how it's a grant, it's trespass. Yeah, it has it'll be marked and it'll and I'll be trespassed. It's a wonder that all the gear doesn't get trespassed. But there it? again, that's another good uh reason to have it clearly marked. Yes, for, for navigation and, and the trespass thing. All right, moving on. Um, scientific research. <clears throat> JC wants a $300 fine for people that don't provide a report. As we did, I would take that out of here. Yeah. That in the fines. Okay. Same um, thing with the next one. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Same thing with the next one. And where are we now? So, we're on recreational violations. Appeal to the police yeah, department? Yeah, I forgot that. Um, Steady, Dave. Huh? Steady. Why? <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> Why? They got no jurisdiction it, at all. Yeah, they're going to, right. Yeah, I would. They have no jurisdiction at all within the shell figures. So, what would you like me to put in there? Let, let me just read the associate power listed on the table. Any penalty should may be appealed to this. I, I would suggest if we're going to do this, that we have the same thing we have with um, the, the people who. The, the, the process to kick somebody off of a, of a lease, they Left. can be come to SHAB and SHAB yeah, make a recommendation yeah. to the board. Most definitely. I just went through this with the Harbor Masters about the guy was denied a mooring permit and he appealed to the Board of Selectmen. And the Board of Selectmen does not have jurisdiction over a mooring. The more issue of mooring permits is, is by state law a, 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 a function of the Harbor Masters office. And they can appeal to the selectmen or God, like I used to tell them, you can appeal to God himself, but that's not going to change the ruling. This needs to say, appeal to the Harbor Shelters Advisory Board for recommendation, for disposition of the board of select, I, or something. But I don't yeah. know how we got to police it. No, that's a, that's a, that was <laughs> Peter's a, right, that was my blood pressure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right. I got that um, recreational violations. If you just want to take a quick look at them. Um, the only one that is standing out to me that's not consistent is the refusal of inspection. Um, it's basically double of all the other violations. So it's just something to consider. And Where are you at, Tara? Oh, second one down. Under uh, recreational violations. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. Okay. okay. What's your issue with it, Tara? I don't have an issue with it. I oh. just noticed that it's. You're just pointing out that it's. I, I don't know if it's arbitrary. It's you know, twice it's like, as much as, as any of the other fines. I mean, maybe it just, you know, pisses somebody off more. I don't know. We're, we're, you're looking at refusal of inspection? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, why is Has it always twice? been that way or is it uh, is this recent? Um, I don't I, 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 sure. I don't ever remember anybody telling me that it could. You it can't look in my catch. basket. Yeah, because the fine is so high. Yeah. Probably. If they find me once, 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 once. once. Nobody knows. It's actually, you find me once. It's just it's the same thing. Just recreation. Okay, so I'm going to think about it. Okay. All right. Well, they may have plenty of money. They don't care. Just find oh, them. That's it. I, I, I think it ought to be consistent with the public. It's just a blush. So okay. now we're on page 159. Which is it's got a no pin display, and I got a certain pin. Do you like the bottom one shipping of live shellfish off of the island? What that fine is? <laughs> oh my god, yep, that's a that's probably a state thing. That was already adopted. No, yeah. that was how serious we felt. Yeah, okay, don't do it. All right, don't um, commercial violations again. I feel like some of these were arbitrary, but these are, are these fines all new. It used to just be days off. Is that yeah. what we're reading here? Yeah. 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 Because I think like sometimes I'm trying to think what I, I asked Jeff about this and he said, you know, if you give someone a day off, they can't get it back. But if you give them a fine, they can fight it and they don't have to pay it if they win. So, which makes sense to me. Um, Okay. But some of these, the way they read to me is like you get a day off, you get a fine, and you get your. Yeah, it sounds like you really it it sounds like you get it. It's made a lot worse. Yeah, you're still getting your days off. You know, so your your point, Andy, right there with the asterisk, the verbal warning may be given for the first offense of the discretion, the shelter for it. So it, it is in there. So, yeah. So, anyway, the way it's written is that, that's just making it a lot worse. The, the, the way the way it's written is 10 days off plus a $250 fine and you confiscate your cash. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, that may be okay for refusal and inspection. You should really get nailed for it. But um, how does that fit with the other? Oh, oh, those are the only ones. That's a tough, that, that oh my God. It, it, it's just, it goes back up to the one about refusal of inspection for the recreational one. I don't agree a with product you. from the harbor that, that belongs to the town. It's a privilege. No, no. You refuse to but have you, your catch. But if you got if you guy if I you give a guy ten days off, you you, you, give, you give a guy ten days off, you've caught you've reached in his pocket for twenty five hundred bucks minimum. Right. Now you're adding two fifty on and top of it. And now you're that. adding two fifty on top of it, and you took his catch. Don't refuse the inspection. Well, I, I totally I, agree with you. you. You what were your stories at the beginning here with the hidden I mean, spaces and Malcolm Ferrer? Can you give them, can you give them, is I it, think when you sign up your license, it doesn't say you have to be able to inspect the catch. Most them. definitely. So but see, it goes yeah. back up to the one above that for recreational violations, refusal of inspection, 250 bucks. Well, I'm I, I don't understand why the way it's written, it, we need clarification. Was it meant to make this even worse? Because that's what this is doing, the way it's written. And if it wasn't meant to be an additional 250 fine, maybe it's an or and at the discretion. I don't know, but we have it has to be explained to us why why we're to me why we're seeing an additional $250 fine instead of just 10 days off. I totally, totally agree. Or give them some flexibility. But yeah, but what did we decide about the refusal of inspection for recreation? Are we gonna we, look at that? We just said we're gonna think about it. We're gonna think about it. Maybe, so maybe. it's either 250 or one and a quarter. 
Yeah, whatever. Um, I, I could probably live with the one and a quarter, but but this but this one here ought to have some flexibility. Where the you know the warden's got a little bit of little bit of flexibility, and he says to the guy, "You got a week off." I mean, just some flexibility. I I I, I would like to. I would like to say we take a separate look at this at this whole section because yeah, that's this, really you know, it's a lot, lot of money. And it's a lot of money. It's a lot of change. Everything's changing in the commercial part, virtually. Um, the all of the conch um, fines are new. Also, they weren't part of it. So things to look at, like an untagged conch pot, it's a hundred dollars per pot. Do you think that's the same as an untagged scallop box, which is fifty dollars per box? Like yeah. that sort of thing. Um, I could comment on one up here that the no pin display. I maybe you want to put no pin like um, available available to look at. Yeah, like, right, right. So you put a sweatshirt on over your t-shirt, you had your pin on your t-shirt. Right. right, it's not displayed, but yeah. you have it right there or whatever. And yeah, you've got it available. Yeah, so I, yeah, I think we need to really take a look at this separately. I mean, no dive it. flag displayed. I don't mean it. I must have got it wrapped around the axle in the <laughs> earlier section. I, 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 I didn't even see this. So, you guys, that's it, except for this, this, is this violation. This is Carlson's no, it's it? not Carlson. Yes. Okay. No. All right. I, <laughs> now, so I'd like to make a recommendation. We take a step. I'd, I'd like to go back and look at all of the. Yeah, um, I would. Yeah, I think so. And, and, and come up with a better solution, maybe a better solution. Okay. Maybe I can get that. some clarification as to why they are with it. Yeah. Well, right. And what the real intention is was it was it to make everything really worse, or because that's what it's doing, and they may go whoever may whoever came up with this may go oh no I didn't mean that I meant yeah, I don't know what I meant I just okay yeah but I I just think that those fines are 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 severe they have a lot yeah I think there's a place I think there's a place for that the other one's not necessary are they new. Oh, they, they are new. Okay. Yeah. This room will be full. Well, the, the <laughs> no, but the, the new the new the new ones we, we need a minute. I need a minute to go well, over would, them. Yeah. But the but the other fines are I I find them. Well, I think we need more clarification on what the intent of adding all these dollar fines to date in addition to days. I agree. In commercial. I will do my best to do all these edits and get the clarification. Can we do okay? We cranked through it. Gosh, it's our, at seven. What do you before mean? seven. Yes, yeah, it's before seven. Well, that's just that's that's like definition. Yeah, it's not over. Like over. <laughs> you, can, you can look through the whole document at your leisure and decide if there's some things that we missed or that you want to change. Yeah. Can we do this again? This was a big thing on our list of things to do. So this was a great thing. Really. This took at least like how long, Peter? It took quite a few months when we did it last time. We did a complete redo of the, those regulations. Yeah, yeah, it took several months. And it was a subcommittee meeting. And, uh, These changes are almost yeah, trivial. Is, is Saturday still an option to be a commercial scholarship? Yeah. I think in the bylaw, yes, it is. At one point, wasn't Shell fishing for steamers open on Saturdays for certain dates. Sundays. I believe it was, but I think it's Saturdays Sundays. it was open too at one point. No, no. Well, we we had opened it, but normally it was like the first. There's only a couple Sunday. But... Yeah, first Sunday of the month. Of, okay. Yeah, it was. I it, thought I remember my dad was on Shabbos. Saturdays yeah, it was really was limited. limited. Certain mm -hmm. December through March, and that was it. But there Sundays. used to be a, either one. You know, there used to be a whole contingent, and the Antarctic guys used to go up there at Akamai Quays, and they, they were there every week. At weekend, and there was some alcoholic beverages. In. Yeah, so, so you know, hand in hand. It was, I mean, it was. It was. I tell you, I gotta laugh. It was, it was a fun. It was fun. All right. Before we get into a session, uh, I'm not gonna... the proposed dinghy regulations at the town. Yeah. What specifically? Oh, what uh, I... She didn't tell me. She just said that she. That she had proposed. this is a topic she's proposing. Right. Not we don't know anything about her. No, she's uh, she wanted to bring it before. So that's okay. I okay. was telling her about the letter and then she okay. she said right. she wanted to bring it to the next meeting. I was supposed to meet with her. And I said, Are you gonna I said, Are you gonna be at the next meeting? She said, Yes, I'll be there. 
Any idea of what she wants to do? Not a drop. So we not a drop. I know it has to do with the 13 foot size. So that's what I was wondering. Things, uh, which again, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but which I really believe it, uh, I would really like to get a vote like we did for the support of the Army Master when we moved about a vote from this board to do something, as my wording in my paragraph is, at Petro Landon to try to alleviate some of this pressure. But she, I, I was supposed to go over this with her on Friday, but she had a problem with the large company that was here working on the dock, so we didn't get a chance to do it. But uh, do you, if, if you want to leave it on the agenda for next. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe she'll yeah. so come or else submit something to us if she right, thinks that's right. what she's got. Yeah. Right, right. Well, just so you guys know, you know, I, for our last meeting, we were to let Sheila know that we were going to send a letter about the ferry companies. And she's like, I didn't know about that. And, and I said, well, not to be a dead horse. And I was very delicate. I said, you know, if you were at the meeting, and I know you're busy, and I know, um, you know, I, I know that a lot of times it's challenging for you to get here, but we've been talking about it for a while. And, and she's like, well, nobody, no scholars called me. And I'm like, well, they came to us. So I, yeah. I don't think it's a slight. I just no, said, just, yeah. I just said, you know, we're we've, we've come to this point. We, they told me to tell you. I'm telling you. So I tried. I tried to explain it to her too, Peter, and she she just wasn't listening. But I mean, it's previously been done before too, hasn't it? They are right. she called. She called right. last, year, the last year. We always do it every year. One. We had three or four groups yeah. sent them, and they're. It used to be on my calendar years. to do it every year just yeah. to wait, just give them a wake up call. Yeah. Well, just so you know, I haven't sent the letter yet because I've been waiting for Samantha Danette to get back to me about uh -huh. when she's sending the letter. And I've emailed her and she's not getting back to me. All right. So here. if anybody has pulled with her, did you? <laughs> was well, she at the meeting? I've got a boogie guy. Was she at the Harbor Plan meeting yesterday? She was. Yeah. Not. Like to propose a motion to adjourn. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I got to eat. Wise guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll second it. All right. Uh, future meetings: April second, April sixteenth. That's uh, April second. You'll know, you'll know the way, right? Yeah. So, uh, motion to adjourn, made yeah. by Mr. Yeah. Anderson. All in second by Mr. Bossy. All in favor to adjourn. All right. Aye. 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 Good job, everybody. All right. Nice job. Thanks. Sarah, thank you. Thank you, Tom.